Okay, let's go, my beloveds. Today's topic is about uh, uterine prolapse. So take your pens and papers and... So actually it's not about just uh, uterine prolapse, it's about confused questions for you, my beloveds, on the last several years previous exams. No misunderstood, confused questions, and I'll try to clarify some points. So, my beloved, uh, uh, uterine prolapse, the, 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 the descent, the descent the, of the uterus down the vaginal canal, it's a common condition with pelvic organ prolapse. While often associated with aging, yes, it's a part of physiology presentation and management involves complexities crucial for medical students, sexual and practitioner or physicians to understand. So let's uh, talk about failure of structures, pelvic support structures, because uh, this, my beloved, uterine prolapse, it's a primarily, it's a primarily failure of pelvic support uh, structures, not just the uterus. Uterine prolapse occurs when pelvic floor muscles, of course, primarily we talk about levator any complex, and supportive ligaments like the uterosacral and the cardinal ligaments weakened or damaged, failing to hold the uterus in its normal position within the pelvis. The uterus itself, it's anatomically normal, nothing happened to uterus, is the hammock beneath and uh, the fetus and the tethers, so, sorry. So the uterus itself, it's usually anatomically normal, it's the hammock beneath uh, and the tethers, tethers uh, around it that uh, fail. So nothing happened to, uh, to the uterus itself. It's a problem of ligaments. So treatment, that's why. So clinical importance of that, you will be asked about that. So clinical strategies, especially surgical ones, of course, focus on repairing or reinforcing uh, this specific sp uh, support structure, so-called apical support, rather than solely addressing the uterus itself. So understanding which structures have failed helps tailor surgical approaches like a uterosacral ligament suspension or sacrocolpopexy. Next, uh, of course, vaginal childbirth is welcome, always welcome. But we have to understand that vaginal childbirth is the single b biggest risk factor, but not the only one. Yes, vaginal, uh, vaginal childbirth, no, 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 nature, uh, is essential, nature, uh, vaginal childbirth is the single biggest risk factor. But trauma to the pelvic floor muscles, nerves like the pudendal nerve, and the connective tissues during vaginal delivery significantly increases the risk. Factors include prolonged second stage of labor, instrumental delivery, so forceps, vacuum, and large birth weight, macrosomia. However, other uh, factors like aging, no, of course we have uh, loss of estrogen, not, not we, uh, women, <laughs> loss of estrogen, tissue atrophy, genetics, uh, collagen quality, uh, what else? Obesity, chronic cough, like uh, with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, huh? uh, chronic constipation, straining, and previous pelvic surgery also contribute significantly. So, uh, clinical importance for that. So, allows for risk stratification, patient counseling, especially uh, postpartum or in patients with multiple risk factors. It highlights the need for need. It highlights the need for preventative strategies like pelvic floor muscle training, Kegel exercises, a little bit later about that, and managing contributing conditions. No, obesity, constipation, COPD, and so on. Then, my beloved, uterine prolapse rarely occasion in isolation. Due to the shared support system, uterine prolapse often coexists with other prolapses, with prolapse of other pelvic organs. This includes Cystocele, so anterior vaginal uh, wall prolapse involving the bladder. Uh, Rectocele, posterior vaginal wall prolapse involving the rectum. Enterocele, uh, apical prolapse of the vaginal vault, uh, often containing small 
bowel. What is clinical importance? A thorough pelvic examination must, must assess all compartments, anterior, posterior, apical, failing to identify and address coexisting prolapses during surgery can lead to treatment failure, recurrence or the emergence of new prolapse in a previously supported treatment. So the pelvic organ prolapse quantification, so-called POPQ, uh, a little bit later also go about that, the system is the standard, standard tool for objectivity, objectively assessing all compartments. Uh -huh. Now about symptoms. Symptoms, the uh, severity doesn't always, doesn't always correlate perfectly with anatomical stage. That is, so a patient with an advanced anatomical prolapse, for example, stage 3 or 4, non pop Q classification, might report minimal bother, while another mild prolapse, stage 1 or 2, might experience <coughs> significant uh, Symptoms like pelvic pressure, no psychosomatic why not, uh, vaginal bulge, <coughs> they describe it like uh, something uh, failing out, uh, falling out, no, you're failing. <laughs> something falling out. So low back pain, of course sexual dysfunction, so no, nothing uh, perfect here. Huh? Symptoms can also include low urinary tract symptoms like uh, frequency, urgency, hesitancy, or incomplete emptying. So about incontinence, we will talk. Uh, treatment decisions, my beloved, clinical issue. Treatment decisions should primarily driven by the patient's comfort or discomfort. That patient's complaints, symptoms, and, and their impact on quality of life. Not solely uh, by the anatomical stage found on examination. That's why it's detailed history focusing detailed history focusing on bother is crucial not just anatomical uh, stage one stage two stage three stage four so about this pop cubes uh, pop q system provides uh, pop q system you will be asked if you find uterine prolapse of course in your medical exams ticket so this pop it's an abbreviation p-o-p-q provides system objects objective staging so what does it mean this uh, acronym it's a pelvic abbreviation, pelvic organ prolapse quantification, POPQ, POPQ. Ex this exam is standardized now, uh, standardized uh, worldwide. Uh, it's an uh, objective and site-specific system for describing, quantifying and staging. It uses the hemen as the fixed point of reference, that is zero point and measures nine specific points in centimeters during patient's training, so-called Valsalva maneuver. Stages range from zero, no prolapse, to four, complete eversion, so-called prosidencia, or maybe you pronounce prosidencia. So clinical importance, essential for accurate diagnosis, consistent documentation, monitoring progression, comparing pre and post treatment outcomes and standardizing research. Every medical student, my beloved, and actually physician uh, dealing with pelvic floor disorders should be familiar with its basic principles. Ah. Now about Kegel. Pelvic floor muscle training, the famous PFMT, is an effective first line treatment for mild to moderate prolapse. So commonly known as a Kegel exercise, this training involves conscious, consciously contracting and relaxing the pelvic floor muscles, levator any. Okay? Regular exercises, of course. When done correctly and consistently, it can strengthen the muscles, improve pelvic organ support, and reduce prolapse symptoms. Particularly in mild to moderate, yeah, to mo even to moderate, easy peasy. Stage 1, 2, I, I heard that even stage 3. Often taught by specialized physiotherapists, physiotherapists, not trainers. Kegel exercise is a low risk, 
exercises are a low risk, non invasive, and effective initial management strategy. It improves patients and can uh, uh, well being, huh? It empowers patients and can potentially delay or even avoid avoid the need for pessaries or surgery. It's also crucial for prevention and postpartum recovery. So pessaries actually about pessaries. So pessaries often effective non-surgical management for men is pessaries is our also view hippocrat pessaries. Uh, what is this pisarium? So a vaginal pessary is a removable device inserted into vagina to provide mechanical support for the pelvic organs. They come in various shapes and sizes. For example, a ring, gel horn, cube, and can be very effective in alleviating symptoms for patients who prefer non-surgical options and poor surgical candidates or wish to delay surgery. For example, future childbearing. Remember, childbearing always welcome. Always. Don't shame your speciality. Now think about abortion. Childbearing, pregnancy always welcome. Always welcome. I will find you. <laughs> Clinical importance. Pessaries are a vital tool in the management. Amementarium. Armamentarium. In the management, armamentarium. Armamentarium. Proper fitting, proper fitting by a trained provider, a specialist, and a patient education on removal, cleaning, follow-up. Why? To, com uh, to prevent complications like uh, ulcerations, infections. So they are key to successful use for this pisarium. Now about hysterectomy, my beloveds. I don't know why your answer is always necessary. No, it's not always uh, necessary during surgical repair. Who told you that? While hysterectomy, well, removal of the uterus, is often performed concurrently with surgical repair of significant uterine, significant uterine prolapse. Uterine preservation surgery, so-called hysteroplexy, hysteropexy, hysteropexy, is a variable, it's a viable, and increasingly, now we see that, you utilized open, option, especially for women who wish to retain their uterus. Why not? Procedures like sarco uh, sacrospinous hysteropexy or sacral hysteropexy attach supportive materials, sutures, mesh to the uterus or cervix to suspend it. A clinical importance of that, physicians must counsel patients on all surgical options, including uterine preservation, discussing the pros and cons, and cons. Now, for example, potential risk of recurrence. Future uterine pathology versus shorter operating time, avoiding hysterectomy morbidity. But if a lady wanna keep her uterus, God bless her and you. Huh? Patient preference plays a significant role. In this case, of course, severe <laughs> no, no, always uh, severe prolapse can mask stress, urinary incontinence. So this uh, severe actually stress incontinence. SUI, SUI. Huh? Uh, it's a, a huge problem. In case of severe uterine prolapse, stage uh, 3 4, the descent can kink the urethra, artificially preventing urine leakage during activities that increase intraabdominal pressure, coughing, sneezing. This is known as occult or masked stress urinary incontinence. When the prolapse is surgically, surgically corrected or reduced with a pessary during examination, the urethral kinking resolves, potentially unmasking significant uh, stress urinary incontinence. What is clinical importance of that? Preoperative assessment must include evaluating for occult stressed urinary incontinence, often by reducing the prolapse during urodynamic testing or cough stress testing. Failure to identify and potentially treat occult uh, stress, mass, ur uh, stress uh, urinary incontinence concurrently, for example, with a mild urethral sling, can lead to troublesome de, de novo stress uh, urinary incontinence. 
uh, postoperatively significantly impacted patient satisfaction. And this is a very important point, my beloveds, because quality of life is something that's, that matters. A uterine prolapse significantly impacts quality of life. Beyond physical symptoms, uterine prolapse can profoundly affect a woman's emotional well-being, body image, sexual function, dyspareunia, uh, avoidance, and social activities, fear of odor, leakage, bulge visibility. The embarrassment and functional limitations can lead to social isolation, isolation and depression. So, clinical importance of that validates the patient's experience and emphasizes emphasizes that, tre that treating prolapse is not just about anatomical correction, but about but about restoring function and improving overall quality of life. Using validated quality of life, why not questionnaires uh, can help quanti quantify the impact and the measure treatment success uh, from the patient's perspective. So you have to validate this patient's experience. You have to love your patient. You have to be friend with patient. Stay blessed. Ha! Don't forget to follow and subscribe my Dr. Y YouTube channel as well as don't forget to follow and subscribe my Dr. Y Telegram private channel. So why is private? not for everybody so where you can find a lot of questions like this uh, your MCQ tests surgery gynecology internal medicine my narrow specialty for example cardiology and so on conscious answers explanations PDF format video lectures like this and so on so ah, actually how to find the tap in searching mode Dr. Y Dr. Y uh, like question, Dr. Y, double H Y, without question mark, huh? Dr. Y in Telegram, find it, click start and choose your plan. It's not costly at all. See you on my Telegram, Dr. Y. Bye, bye, bye.